In this step, the insertion direction is proposed automatically by the software. If you would like to change it, rotate the model as if looking at the scan from the direction that the splint would be put on the jaw. Press the From View button, and this new insertion direction will be calculated. The insertion direction can also affect the possible retentiveness of the splint. By adjusting the direction, you can control the location and volume of the undercut areas. If a notification saying that the model has tunnels or holes appears, it is advisable to press Correct, as this ensures that further design steps are not hindered by possible problems on the surface of the scan. You can now adjust the retentiveness of the splint. All the colored areas are undercuts. When the Perform Undercuts Removal option is enabled, it will block the splint from going into an undercut area. If you disable this option, the undercuts will still be shown, but the splint will not be automatically blocked from going into those areas. By changing the retention value, you can decide how much the occlusal splint is allowed to go into an undercut area. In the wax trimming step, you can apply wax to protect potentially sensitive areas in the patient's mouth from direct contact with the splint's inner surface, as contact may cause discomfort or irritation to the patient. For example, the ruga, papilla incisiva, incisal edges, and the gum line. Wax can also be applied to block out and safeguard fixed retainers, tooth jewelry, and fragile structures. Blockout wax should also be applied on surfaces with missing scan data, for example holes or scan artifacts. Note that you can use the Smooth tool by left-clicking the mouse button and smoothing any areas. The Smooth tool allows for the adding of relief wax in a controlled way, using the surface normals of the scan. For a stronger effect, the Add tool can be applied in a desired strength and diameter. You can also use the Add and Smooth tools to apply extra wax relief into sharp fissures and interproximal areas to significantly facilitate the seating of the splint. In this step, you can also add retention locally. For example, retention can be acquired from undercut areas from both the buccal and palatal sides of the patient's teeth. This can be done bilaterally, for example, from the canines, the first premolars, or first molars. Use the Remove tool to remove some blockout wax in those areas. The color scale informs you how much depth the local retention area has. When satisfied, press Next to go further. Now it is time to draw the splint outline. You can add points or hold down the left mouse button and draw a line. You can start your outline in various places, for example, starting from the last molar. The outline needs to be completed by connecting the last point to the starting point of the spline. Please note that in cases where you chose to acquire retention locally, it is crucial to draw the outline through the desired retention areas. You can edit the spline at any time. In the case presented here, the outline is drawn following the prominence line over the local retention areas. The incisal edges are covered with approximately 1 to 1.5 millimeters of material, and on the palate, the outline is scalloped following the gingival margin at a 0.5 to 1 millimeter distance. Behind the maxillary incisors, the distance is slightly increased. Now you can also adjust the splint thickness and set the minimum thickness. The latter will ensure that the minimum thickness value is enforced wherever it is not possible to maintain the general thickness value. The software notifies you in case of minimum thickness violations. Minimum thickness will depend on the specific machine manufacturing process selected. The offset from teeth to splint directly affects the fitting of the splint. We recommend it to be more than 0 mm. The drill diameter is set when using a milling machine instead of a 3D printer. When you are satisfied with placement of the outline, move on to further steps.